Um, this is a subject that I love. Um, I've probably forgotten a lot of what I knew 20 years ago, but uh, it, it'll come back to me. Um, uh, it was very important for me to, to read out a lot about heraldry when I got my own matriculation of arms. Um, this is, of course, the badge of Godfrey, Lord McDonald, and uh, used to be the original arms of the, uh, not the original, but the Earl of Ross would be the, the red eagle uh, behind the galley. Notice that there's black oars in them. It's very important that they, there are black oars in the, in the shield. Heraldry is very important that you pay attention to the detail. So, um, can I have the next slide? That, and I'll get into that later. Down arrow. <laughs> down, down arrow is fine, or the side one, either one. Oh, down. 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 Yeah, that's a little small right there. Now, I thought I would start off with frequently asked questions just to sort of get some housekeeping things out of the way. So, if you could push it again, please. Wow. The number one question I ask is push it again, please. Is this my coat of arms? Does anybody recognize that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whose arms are those? Oh, you would have to ask. Um, it's Godfrey. Isn't that McDonald of McDonald? Yeah, those are Godfrey's. Those are the undifference arms of McDonald of McDonald. Yep. And those are his. A lot of people hang them on the wall, which is fine. Uh -huh. You're better off just saying that when you introduce people in your house, you say, these are the arms of my chief, yeah. Lord McDonald. Mm -hmm. He's not Lord Godfrey, he's Lord McDonald. Um, and I'll just go through this. I'm going to go through this a couple times just to try to. Bill, Bill McCandy suggested that I uh, give everybody just the pieces and the parts of a coat of arms. So this is a full achievement. This is what a chief gets. I mean, he's actually a baron, so it has even more stuff on it. So, um, the ground and the motto uh, this is the slughorn, which is the slogan, frog given, which is Heathery Isle. It's all on the base there. And then the shield is the most important part of the arms because you have to keep that separate. And that is what they would have in battle to identify who this person is. Uh, you buy either by a banner or a shield. So in the first quarter is uh, a red lion with armed and langed azure, which means blue uh, armed, blue, blue claws, and langed, blue tongue. They use a lot of French. Uh -huh. the way that they describe things. And then in the second quarter, there's a red hand in armor holding a uh, red cross across the fit sheet, which is pointed at the bottom. So it's very detailed. The, the cross has to be pointed at the bottom. If it's flat straight across, it's not the McDonald cross. And then the third quarter is the, what you saw earlier, the oh. red galley, or the black galley with red flags, oars in action, sable, which is black oars in action, sable. And then the fourth quarter is verd, or green, with a salmon, neant, which is swimming this way, proper. That means a, the proper means it's not a red salmon, it's not a blue salmon, the proper means it's a salmon that looks like a salmon. So this is where the artist can really, with the, a few of these, the artist can really make their own mark on the painting. That's why every coat of arms looks different even though it's the same coat of arms. So you have to go by that. And then in the center to make it different from slate, these are the arms of slate, is an inescutcheon, which is a small shield on the inside. And that has the red eagle, it has the badge on it, a red eagle cross with a black galley, with black uh, sails, and oars in the action sable. So sables. Um, and then on top would be the baronial chapeau, or a, and some people would have the crest coronet. Godfrey also has the crest, look, you'll see that up above. But on top of the shield is the baronial chapeau because he's a baron. And then a helm befitting his degree. And this is because he's a baron, it's a five bar gold bar helmet. It's very nice because he's a, a peer uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, and then you have the crest coronet, which also makes his different from slave. 
And this ducal coronet uh, is called a ducal coronet. And that's usually when uh, you're the chief of your own name. So he's McDonald of McDonald. So instead of having the barber pole, which you'll see in another slide, um, they have the ducal coronet, uh, which differences McDonald from McDonald of Slate. And I don't know if the, the gene, genealogy is a, a bit murky with, uh, not murky, but uh, the, uh, the difference between Slate and McDonald had to be uh, adjusted in 1947 because they were both using the same arms. They couldn't do that. So they had to do something that was grander and, and distinctive. So you can difference arms by adding things, usually going down generations, or you can difference arms by taking things away. Uh, and in his case, they added, by going to the senior line, adding this interscription. So it's all, uh, you can tell by looking at a coat of arms what place in the family someone is. There's no border around the edges. It's all with the undifferenced arms. And then for supporters, um, they're the, these are the supporters. And you'll see when you see the slate arms, they're slightly different. And on top is the hand in armor with the red cross, Fitchy, cross cross on the Fitchy. You see the pointed bottom. And then above the top is a motto, Per America Terrace. Okay, the next slide, please. There's that er that supposed to be like ermine that those Oh, that yeah, I'm sorry. That? The tours oh. go, go back. Yeah, go back. Just back up. Yeah, yeah. just back up. Yeah. Oh, right, Harry. There you go. I, I forgot about the tours. You know, because the tours is the barber pole that's up here, and then the mantling is this back behind. And you'll see the tours. I'll show you that in the slate arms. Later, so. How do I get a coat of arms? Is the other question I get. <laughs> so you can push the button again. <laughs> Put you to work, Harry. Oh. <laughs> you figured. <laughs> you can inherit. Mm -hmm. And that's. Can you push it again? I think you can just hit the space bar too. It's supposed to say matriculation on top. Sorry about that. To inherit a coat of arms you get what's called a matriculation from the Lord Lion Kingdom Arms. And um, that is uh, because your family, your, someone, the, someone who you're descended from already has a coat of arms in Scotland. And you can matriculate off of that with a suitable difference. Or if you're the male heir, you would get it on difference. Okay, the next one is, or you can get a grant. And there's, Push the button again, please. There, oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't know, I must, I've screwed up my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, matriculation is, is a matriculation of old arms or previously granted arms. Or you can get a grant. If you have an ancestor born in Scotland... You no, know, if you were born in Scotland, I'm sorry. An ancestor born in Scotland ancestor who owned land in the U.S. prior to 1776. And there's some, probably some people in the room that have that. Um, if you have a position appointed by the chief, usually high commissioner or deputy high commissioner, and that's what Al Manning would use to get his arms. Or you can just do what Americans do and assume them. <laughs> <laughs> um, not legal in Scotland, but, there's, but it's, you can do whatever you want here because it's free country. Why if you owned land in the U.S.? Prior to because you were British, considered a British subject. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> See, I, my, my immigrant ancestor was born in Scotland. He owned land in the U.S., owned land in Halifax, Nova Scotia, so I could get Canadian arms. Oh, cool. Um, but I got mine because of the matriculation, because I inherited it. So, um, the next slide, please. Who grants the coat of arms? I've already told you. Do you remember now? The Lord Lion King of Arms. He's in the Lion Court, and he's an officer of the Crown, and he is in charge of all genealogies and protocol and heraldry. And genealogy and heraldry, as you know, are very closely connected because you've got to prove that immigrant ancestor and what place in the family tree that you are. 
Next slide, please. Next, oh, next slide. Oh, yeah, we got it. Lord Lyon, that's the answer. Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> now, this is the basic shield. We're going to be repetitive. That's what you would identify you in battle. And that's just a silver shield. So the things, the shields have tinctures. So if I were to describe the shield, I would say a, um, a silver shield, just to keep it simple. And um, next slide. But they have colors to make them more interesting and different, because they all have to be different. Oh, I was going to go through, I'm, I'm sorry, go back. This has a torso with a barber pole. See how that's different? Then this is basically Godfrey's arms without the yeah. discussion. Mm -hmm. There are collars around the leopards. And it's got a medallion at the bottom. And it's got his baronet of Nova Scotia mm -hmm. medallion hanging down, which is very important. He's got the same crest, but he has, doesn't have the ducal coronet. He has the torse. And he has a helmet befitting his degree, which is a knight's helmet, which is always facing forward. And you know that's a, a knight's helmet. It's a jousting helmet facing forward. And see and how it's this, shaped kind of a bit. Is this sleet? That a slate, yeah. Slate. Slate. Yeah. Okay. Same model, pair terrace. This doesn't show the uh, same uh, slug horn below the frock even. Uh, he has the same. And my arms are a difference of this, and I'll show you um, in a later slide. Okay, next please. Here are the colors I was talking about. You have all kinds of pretty colors. I don't know if I'd want purple in my arms. <laughs> no, I don't think but, so. But uh, you can do that. And back before they had color printing, they came up with a shorthand for engraving book plates so that you could look at a book plate if you knew that you had, if it's vertical lines, it's gold. If it's horizontal lines, it's blue. If it's uh, angled arms, it's bare which is green, and purpure, and sable, or and argent. Argent is white. Argent can, and or, can, or is gold. It can also be depicted like they are in my arms as a real gold color, or you can have them as yellow. And then the white can either be white or silver. Okay, next slide, please. So you definitely, that's the first point of difference. Then you break the shield up into pieces. And McDonald had, McDonald had usually most parts, except for Glengarry, have quartered arms. And normally quartering is something that is a continental European uh, way of differencing arms by putting different families together. And the chiefs at one point wanted to be like their cousins in Europe, and they wanted their arms to look like quartered arms, so they came up with the quartered arms. So that's why they changed. One reason, that's why they think they changed from the simple black galley with the red eagle of Ross behind. You can see you can get very creative <laughs> in making shields different. Uh, this is a camel. It's not the right colors, but it's but for journey. Yeah, right. um, this is a bend. Um, this would be a psalter like the, which is what the uh, St. Andrew's uh, flag is. Mm -hmm. That's a cross. Jack, you remember Colonel Jack McDonald? Mm -hmm. He had a cross on his arms. Oh, did he? Yeah, and uh, with all the McDonald quarters in the, around each of those quarters. Um, Are these the only choices you have? No, there's a, I'll show you another slide. Okay, so, I mean, there's lots of creativity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lots of it gets It's not like you have to pick. It gets complicated. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've never seen some of these, but uh, they're, they're out there. Most, most of them are very simple with just a simple shield. If, you're, if your name was Sickle, you might put Sickles in here as a charge. So that's, go to the next slide, that'll we'll talk about charges, I think, or maybe divisions. That's a, this is the one that's about even more. Oh, yeah. I, I can't read it, I'm sorry, it's blurry, but uh, this is an interesting one here. I have seen that. <laughs> um, uh, this is used a lot to be flags, country. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. Now, charges. After you have your color and the way you've divided your shield, you add charges. And charges are very specific. 
Can you see, anybody see the difference between those two? Yeah. yeah. One is cooped and one is erased. Erased means torn off. Cooped means cut off. Oh. So that would be a red griffin. I'm not sure if it's a griffin or an eagle. Eagle's head cooped. Lang azure. So, uh, and the next slide, please. So there's lots of anything. <coughs> I just took a bunch of charges off the internet. Um, you can just pick just about anything that you want. If you want McDonald, uh, if you go to the Lord Line and you can prove your ancestry is McDonald, you're going to get something, probably a galley in there somewhere. You're probably going to get a, uh, some of the other elements. And if your name is Atkins, you're going to get uh, Atkins Farms with uh, some kind of variation of it. Uh, whether you can prove yourself a descendant of the chief or not, the, the closer you, you are to the chief as far as being able to prove descend descendancy from the chief, then you would get a, a very close arms to Godfrey, and you'll see with mine. Because I can prove descendancy. Uh, my arms are very, very close. Um, now this galley is wrong. It's got the right red flags, but it's got the yellow sails. Mm. And they're not furled um, like this. They're supposed to be black and furled. So we'll push the button again and we'll get rid of that one. It's probably oh, camera or something. If you're an architect, you might want to use a column. Greek column. Um, this, of course, is the red line. Very important that it's armed and lanked. It's azure. Uh, that's a three-towered castle, which is similar to the one I have on my arms. And if you're in the Navy, you might want to put, put a cross anchors. Okay, next slide, please. Now, this is this is what the genealogists love. Is this is Say this is my grandfather. That's the undifference arm. There's no borders, there's no difference at all. They have a very um, uh, strict, and it's not always followed because it's, it's very complicated and murky, but um, hierarchy of how arms are differenced. The, the simplest difference is the color of the border. And this is a gold border, which is what my arms have, which is one off from the chief. So, oldest son inherits the chief with the undifference arms. Second son, which ours was uh, James McDonald of Castle Canvas, and uh, gets the gold. He was the second son of the chief. And uh, there are some lines that dropped off, that, that came off uh, before our line, but at the time my, my grandfather did his genealogy, they could not find these people, and that's, they still have it to this day, but I know of, found them. And so we ended up with, luckily, got the gold border, which is the senior, senior border. And then the next one is silver and so on. And then you start messing with, with the embattled and checky and uh, of the other different stars. Down here, the second sun, you start messing with the border, different uh, symbols and charges. And these are what they call temporary preserves. Grandson, uh, that's not showing you. Okay, that, that's, that's the next slide. <laughs> These are temporary preserves, which are labels. Since the oldest son is going to inherit dad's arms, they have to be differenced. So my son would have my exact coat of arms. He's James McDonald of Castle Chemist, the younger. He has my exact arms with a gold label, or a black label, over the top of it. And it's temporary. It could be, so to speak, peeled off, or washed off, or painted off, or whatever, um, when I kick the button. <laughs> and then the second son gets a crescent, and the third son gets a mullet, the fourth son martlet, and you know, all the way to that. Uh, Annulet is a, a gold circle. If you have lots of kids, Rose, I don't know what happens if it goes beyond that. <laughs> um, I have seen the first three. I've never seen a marker on any arms. Um, so those are called marks of cadency. 
Does that make sense? Is this getting mm -hmm. like too, too far into the weeds? Okay, next slide. Now we're going to go back and review. This is the royal arms, on different arms of the queen. And you see it has a compartment down below, or the ground. Uh, it has her motto, which I'm not, does anybody know what that is? Do de mon droit. I'm not sure what that means. Um, the, the motto has a shield, it's quartered with England in the first and fourth quarters. Second quarter is the undifference arms of the King of Scots, Queen of Scots, and then uh, the Queen of Ireland, uh, apart for the, I don't know why Wales got left out, but yeah. I never understood that. <laughs> Someone who knows history better. And she has two supporters. She has a lion with a royal crown on top of it and a uniform. I don't know the history of the British arms, but those are the supporters. And then she has a knight of the garter, garter around it, similar to Ian's badge, but it's a different knight. Different, uh, Ian's a knight of a baron, a hereditary knight, a baronet. And this is uh, not hereditary. You have to be accepted into that. But of course, the queen automatically gets it, and most of her descendants. Um, the mantling, it's hard to see, I realize. Uh, the hers is ermine on the inside and gold on the outside. Godfrey's was ermine. And then the number of dots in the ermine, and I don't, I don't know much about fur. Does anybody know anything about fur? But an ermine fur has black spots yeah. in it. Yeah. And the number of spots you have, I guess, so. <laughs> uh, my, my, in my own thinking, the, the number of spots, the more spots, the more valuable the fur, the higher the rank you are. Yeah. So the spots have a lot to do with it. And then she has a helm befitting her degree, which is um, the five bars like uh, Godfrey's, but it's gold, the whole helmet is gold. And then she has her crest on top, which, uh, on top of her crown, which is the world lion. This one is rampant, and I can't remember the name. Got this one. Well. <laughs> I can't remember the name of this one. I think it's Sejong, I'm not sure. What else do we do? We got everything on there? So, since we've been through that twice, you all can hopefully remember some of that. Um, very important to remember that the shield has to be the, the defining piece of that person. You should be able to look at just the shield, no, that's the queen. So, that if you see that flag flying over Holyrood Palace, she's in residence. Mm -hmm. David? David shield. First slide. <laughs> David? Is it, David, is it true that, um, I mean, we, you see a lot of people buying a rapid flying flag and flying that flag. Yeah. And I was told, you only fly that when the queen's resident. So I always tell my neighbors have to fly or somebody say, oh, is the queen coming for tea? Yeah. <laughs> a lot we, of people we made a decision in Clam a long time ago not to fly yeah. the, the line rank and flag uh, at our games. Yeah, we don't So I don't know if anybody's doing it. But, uh, it's not illegal in the U.S. because we're a free country, but it's just bad, bad taste. <laughs> it's not kosher. It, yeah. would be, it would be illegal in Scotland to fly that, yeah. and yeah. they don't. They, I lived there for four years. They fly the salt. Mm -hmm. so. I just Googled her motto, always the same. Always the same. Oh, Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Well, she is. She's very steady. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, this is terrible speak. I, I sort of gave you a little bit of it, but this is my place of my arms. And I'll just go through a little bit. Quarterly first, arch in the line, and rent and rules, arm in line, azure, second, or a dexter hand and armor, grouped at the elbow, best place proper, holding a cross, cross, so that she rules. Uh, or a limb pad, sails, curl, and oars in action, sable. Flag, rules, so red flags, oars in action, sable. In shorthand, uh, it's just the arms of the chief of McDonald's slave within a golden border or in charge of the center point of the castle, triple tower, rules, mason, sable. So, oh, I forgot to talk about the castle. The difference between me and Kingsborough is we've added the castle. My, family, my, my father was McDonald of Kingsborough and Castle Camus. My brother, older brother, wanted to be Kingsborough because of Flora, more well-known house. So I was lucky enough to inherit the Castle Camus, which is the older house. 
so on the 17th. And so we had to come up with a difference. So we added, just like the discussion on the McDonald's arms, we added the castle and triple tower. And then the crest blazed, and above the shield was placed a helmet fitting its degree with a mantling pool's double arch on a wreath of livery set for crest, a dexter hand and armor, best ways to the field of proper, holding a cross cross of Fitchy Missouri. So, a herald painter can take that gobbledygook and make a painting without having to see anything. And they have artistic license to make the lion look fierce, docile, it's still a lion rampant. They, they have the license to, to make the uh, galley any, you know, slightly different, um, but it still has to have the wars in action sable, um, the, the history of the slave family orally as it was always three, um, and but that's not completely blazing. Uh, and so there's some artistic license, and that's why if you get a coat of arms, it's always good to get a herald artist that, that you like, a heraldic artist that you like. So, next slide, please. No, that's my arms. So you can see the slate, the charges, oh, the middle, yeah, the castle. gold border for Kingsborough, and the triple tower of castle in the middle for Castle Hamas. And then I have two models. I have Hermera Carteris Gubicue, which is by sea and by land as well. <laughs> and then Case Show Canvas is a, kind of a pseudo slughorn. It's really just another motto, which is Castle Canvas in Gallic. Um, and then you see the same colors as the end slate with the uh, silver and red tours. And then the mantling is silver and red. And the mantling was used to keep the sun off the knights' back when they were in the Middle East. Um, next slide, please. The bottom of the cross isn't showing, so we don't know whether it's sharpened or not. Right. If you look, it's not very. It is, but it, uh, it's in the hand, huh? Yeah, that's that's the artist uh, the, the artist interpretation. Extend it down below the hand. The yeah. Artistic. Yeah. Uh, the the torch is kind of in yeah. front. Okay. Next. And then there, this is Ian's. You can see that. To, to show you again that there's no gold border around it, no castle. Okay, next slide. I, didn't, I forgot I did this. You can <laughs> see, very similar. Yeah. Chieftains don't get supporters. Um, oh. You have to be a, a chief of a clan to get supporters. Um, well, we so, support you. Um, but I do get a, a guidon, which is a, a banner, a flag. All right, next slide, please. That's the difference between Slate and McDonald. They added the discussion in the middle and the crest cornet, which we have in our crest badge. And you know, Klansmen, as you know, but I'll get into that a little later, but wear the crest badge, which is the chief arms, which is this. Um, Surrounded in a buckle with the motto on it. it. Has to be a buckle. Yeah, <coughs> and I've heard lately that there was a, something wrong with the buckle that we've been well, using for so long. I've heard it both ways. I mean, the, is the, that the Knights of the Garter apparently got upset when they started making clan crests with buckles on them. They yeah. thought it was too close to a garter. I just wondered if it made a difference. If it I really don't think over. it does. It, I don't see a lot, what a lot difference it, it makes. Does. Because yeah. we've had it one way for a long time. Now all of a sudden that was wrong. Yeah. So I just wondered what the. What the I, I don't know what the right answer is to that. People have asked me. And, um, I think six of one half dozen. The other. I, I know that the, I, I have a couple of paintings of some crest badges that were done in the 50s after Godfrey's dad I had the crest coronet on it to make yeah. the difference. Yeah. And um, uh, that was the other way around. And that was done by a lion. Maybe that was one of those artistic licenses. Yeah, I think it's an artistic I've... license. But uh, there is one that upsets the Knights of the Garter, and I can't remember which one it is. I guess we could go back. I don't want to take the time. Go back to that slide of the Queen's Arms. You got, you got some time. Okay. All right, next slide, please. 15, 15 minutes. Now, this this is no, Larry, Glengarry, and notice it's not quarterly. 
but he has the Red Eagle of Ross with white sails, so he has several differences. And a lot of times, with Glen Gary, uh, a Glen Gary person will tell you, "Oh, I've got the under different arms of McDonald with just you know very very few changes." There are very few changes, but they they um, have the white sails, they have the black, just like the Lord of the Isles, Red Eagle of Ross. No crown on the eagle. So that's the difference. The red hand, that's different. And then the cross cross up there. Whoops. So those are all differences. <clears throat> Galley oars, are they there somewhere? Uh, no, no, there's, you're right, they're not. There's no oars. In, huh. But I think on, yeah, that, that's a difference too. So there's a lot of differences between, that's very, although there's, I, I don't know all the history, but Lord MacDonald of Eros. Uh, for one generation was uh, a peer, and he got those arms. He was Glengarry, he was the chief of Glengarry, but he didn't take them up, or his son didn't take them up fast enough, and they, they, they fell off. I can't remember all the details, but that's hmm. the gist of the story. And since Glengarry is technically, genealogically, a cadet of Van Rael, uh, but not, it's a chief of, he's a chief of a clan in his own right, he has one arrow in his bear, and Van has two arrows pointing to the bear. But they're the same line. And the next one you'll see that the Raven's Rock also is his crest, the Raven's Rock with the Raven on it. Yeah. And he wears Raven feathers. Has a torse because he's not barren, or chief of the name. And he has the tilting helmet. Oh, I forgot, I didn't point out my helmet, that's right. My, my helmet is has a, a gold bar, one gold bar on the front. I saw that helmet. Which is the same rank as a tilting helmet. And I chose the barrel helmet with one bar. So, next slide, please. This is the arms of a lady, and there, a, a woman, unless she's a chief or a, a baroness in her own right, uh, or a Marquesa, whatever, in her own right, uh, she would get her father's lo lozenge, her shield in a lozenge, which is a diamond shape. And um, my daughter is not married, so she, she's 22, 23, and she, she could wear my arms in just a lozenge without any difference. And that's to attract a mate or a you know, future <laughs> husband because she's from an armaturous family. So, uh, but when she gets married, she would take the arms of her husband or, or impale them with my arms and have half the shield of my arms and half the shield of her husband's arms. I don't have an example of that. This is uh, Countess of Seafield. She's a countess in her own right. But it's still on a lozenge. You can see there's no crest, but there's the yeah. Uh, whatever the coronet of a crown of a countess has five pearl balls and um, uh, this is a red hat with the crown, gold crown. All right, next slide. Clerical arms, they get different. Oh, wow. Usually when a, a priest gets arms because they weren't supposed to go to battle, they would get a hat, and this is a, probably a, um, a Monsignor, because it's a, a they, they, the, the number of tassels has something to do with what rank they're of. It could be a bishop, I'm not sure, um, but they have a, a clerical cap, they call it, um, with the tassels, and if they're just a priest, they might have two or three tassels. And then if they're a um, higher rank, uh, like a canon, they might get more tassels. The black, and then the monsignors get uh, an up, get, or bishops get the red. Okay, next slide. And all, I'm sorry, going back to that, uh, the, um, if you get a matriculation or a grant of arms as a, a, a minister, um, the crest would be down in the lower right hand corner so that future generations can inherit the crest. You would still wear the crest in a, in a badge, but uh, it's not shown in the arms itself. Okay, next slide. 
and that's the full, full Monty. That's that's Harold Green use. That's the King of Scots, ready for battle. And he's got everything on. He's got his whole horses draped with uh, his coat of arms, and he's uh, he's got the crest and everything. So that is. I don't know if you ever dressed that way, probably not. But, uh, <laughs> you certainly would be seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> would be a nice target. You know the name of me, Forge? No. <laughs> Nisbet. Nisbet? Nisbet. Nisbet. I believe. Okay. Well, that's Nisbet. All right, next slide, please. Now, getting into crest badges. We talked about the belt and buckle yeah. and the tours. So this is the chief's crest within the belt and buckle of the model, this is what clansmen wear. If you're a chieftain, you wear it in a circlet. If you're an army, or if you're a midriss, you wear it in a circlet with one feather. If you're a chieftain, it's a circlet with two feathers. And a chief is a circlet, no belt buckle, uh, either with three feathers. And then if you're a, a baron like Godfrey, then you would get a baronial chapeau on top. And I was gonna pass around you can see the difference. And this this is my cap badge. It's in a circlet with the motto. And then this is in 1947 when uh, Lord MacDonald um, matriculated with the Ducal Coronet. Everybody was using the slate arms, and my grandfather decided to have these painted and then made up into silver badges. And he made 60 silver badges. And this uh, was his, so this is number two. Godfrey got it. Godfrey's father got number one. So I've got the second clan crest cap badge ever made. Oh, that's what, nice. what we're using today. So pass that around and see the difference. That's really nice. All right, the next slide, please. That's, a, that's oh, wow. what the torch was. With, uh, the mantling behind was to keep the sun off the top of the helmet. The torso was to tie it to the helmet. And then the crest on top was looks like some kind of a dragon or a griffin or something. And that's uh, one of these. This is a, the same helmet I have on my shield, which is a single uh, gold bar down the middle. All right, next slide. These are beautiful, David. Oh, thank you. This is a fireplace screen that I have that my grandfather got from Hugh uh, Morton, uh, McCray, McCray Morton, who was the son, the grandson of the, uh, the McCrays that had McCrays Meadow in North Carolina, but grandfather met in Allen Games. He was a guest of honor one year. So that's this my, my crest, or then my, what would soon to be my, my brother's crest, uh, in a circlet with the two feathers behind. I have that in my living room. Next, please. Flags. I told you that I got a guidon, which is eight feet in length. Chiefs get standards, which have less divisions. But the guidon has five stripes in a livery color, which is red and gold. And it either had the arms quartered in the hoist, and I was cheap, I, I, I wanted to pay less money for the painting, so I got Scottish flag in the hoist, which was the other choice you had. Um, looking back at it, I wish I'd got my arms in the end. But uh, it has my crest. And then a chief, the, the, they are very strict about the lengths. And I, I don't know exactly what the lengths are, but uh, it's chief standard. It's called a standard. It has less stripes, either one stripe or two, depending on what rank they are. Um, but they're say 12 feet in length for a chief and 14 feet in length for a, uh, a baronet and all the way up to the queen who is probably 20 feet long. Wow. Um, mine's eight, which I'm proud of. And eight's long enough, I think. Yeah. I don't have one made, but um, you can see a little bit of the heraldry speak above and below that I didn't cut off because I thought you might not see that. Okay, next slide, please. How much time do we have? Um, Four minutes. Four minutes, okay. Um, this is just an example of what a full achievement looks like. There's a standard for achievement. There's a standard down below being held up by a supporter, which is the stag. Um, and 
that's very typical uh, matriculation for a chief. And that's a beautiful picture of a hang in your living room. Next one, please. This is Al Manning. And you can't see it, but this is the undifferenced arms of Al Manning. Uh, and this is his sons with the label up here. You can't see it, but he usually put his sons in the um, margin, we call it. Next slide, please. This is a, another example of a grant. That's a, that's, a, that was, that's a minister. It shows the arms over here of the, uh, of the ancestor. This is uh, our chaplain's arms. But this is the arms of his ancestor. So he got a, a grant of arms for his ancestor. And then he matriculated his own arms uh, at, at, based on his place in the family. So there's a green border that's checky, which is like a castellated, which is like a, a castle. So you can tell from that, if you looked at that chart that I showed you before, you can tell what position in the family he is. Next slide, please. That's mine. I decided, that since the Herald was so helpful to me, to use the arms of the Herald, um, Sir Crispin Agnew um, of Loch Awe, in, in my shoe, and I also didn't want my daughter to feel left out if I put my son's arms mm -hmm. in. So I, Good idea. I did that. And all right, it's a, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. thing to have. Is, it, is that a description? That's the full yeah, that's description? The whole, that's the G. I, I added a little more because I could have just said the son of the grandson of Summerlin, or son of Summerlin McDonald and done with it. Right. And that very short one. But I, I paid extra to have the whole genealogy back to Florida, or back to James McDonald Castle Panels. Oh, cool. Just because I was sort of splitting the houses off. Uh, next line. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> we don't have much time. Did I confuse you? No. Were the shields or the or the pinnacle? They were actually used. Our, they were actually supposedly used in battle, I, but I don't think that Godfrey, Godfrey was, was, or Saint Ian's, was actually ever used in battle. Mm -hmm. The Scots just didn't do that. I mean, the Tarsus. Somebody was coming at you with a claymore. You're not worried whether 